Okay, let's see if you can hear me now. Last one of the the year. If you can hear me, please type something in. We've got 15 of you here today. All right, good, 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 good. With that said, I'm going to warn you. We have a faucet that is broken in the master bedroom where it's also my office. Um, we're unable to turn off hot water. We're struggling to pry open the faucet to get to the core so we can turn it on and off. You may hear a couple things in the background. That's just my kids acting like their father, maybe cussing and swearing at the stupid thing. <laughs> Oh, if it's just not one thing, it's another is all I'm going to say. Welcome to real life, right? So uh, going through, let's get this started. Let's get this recorded so you guys can hear it. You aren't here. Although it looks like we are recording, so we should be good. All right, so with that said, here we go. Welcome to the trade findings and adjustments for, as I have to change my date, we are on the 17th. So welcome to the trade findings and adjustments for Thursday, the 17th. Probably should save this as the correct document. I was going to start off with Robin Hood. Just to let you know, if it's too good to be true, then guess what? It is too good to be true. Plain and simple, they got hit with a $65 million civil penalty. Basic reason, they were front running trades. They are not running a brokerage house using the US standards of service for brokerage houses. So, um, the execution on customer's orders would go against the levels of trading that they offered them. You obviously know, I know someone who had naked short puts that had expired that also had long puts. So basically on the same expiration date, long, books, long puts expired, but not short puts. And they got assigned uh, shares of Tesla. What a joke. A little twenty-five or twenty-seven thousand dollar account having to pick up six hundred shares of Tesla. Obviously it induced a margin call, sold off. To make a long story short, he owed like thirty-eight thousand dollars and lost every penny in that twenty-seven thousand dollar trading account. Five dollar spread. $5 spread, but the long put expired worthless, which is protection. And the shorts went against it. Totally bull crap. Really ridiculous. So it's good. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me, even though they have all of these billions of dollars, they're going to get shut down. They're going to get shut down. And man, I hope that they... I hope that they get run up the flagpole. That's what should happen, right? I hope they just, all the way from top to bottom, those SOBs just go to jail because they know what they're doing. Uh, I think it's funny. The settlement relates to historical practices that do not reflect Robin Hood today. That's from Dan Gallagher, Robin Hood's chief legal officer at Robin Hood. With all due respect, I call bullshit. No way. They are, they are so full of it, it's unbelievable. 
with that said, I'm getting into the end of the year. And our trades are doing really well. So I just want to throw a little something out that I'm going to say the rules. So let's say I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go the psychological rules for trading. And I don't know how many I'm going to come up with, but as I was thinking about this, there are certain rules that you need to have in your head for trading, for investing, for for spread trading, the, the whole nine yards. But if you don't have these rules set in stone and understood, there is no way you will ever be profitable in your trading accounts. It just won't happen. Um, I see Ida and Mary here. Lee, this will go towards you. Uh, Jeff Schaffner is here. Jeff, this will go towards you who actively follows the safe option strategies uh, information. There are some rules or some tendencies that I am going to value as most important if you truly want to be trading or investing yourself. These are some of the rules that I follow that, again, there may be not hard, fast rules, but you need to have these in your head if you want any chance of ever truly being successful in, in the investing world whatsoever. Number one, if you, how would I say this? If you, if you, word I'm looking for if you judge your success on a daily basis then you are a day trader and have no right being in the market rule number one you know, it's the dumbest thing in the world. And I'm going to go over this uh, next Monday when I go through the uh, trading, the uh, trading smart, whatever, smart goals. If you judge yourself every single day on your success or failures, you're a day trader. And with all due respect, day traders have no place in the market other than to to give it uh, to give it liquidity to the winning side. That's it. If you're <coughs> if you're on and off in trades in a day. You're a day trader. And with all due respect, you may have some winning trades, but you're one trade away from losing it all. Day traders are giving those of us that are successful liquidity. And the trend or the tendency is to be on the losing end of the trade. If you're judging yourself on a daily basis, you're a day trader. You have no place to, to be in the market. There's no place for you in the market except to funnel funds to the rest of us. It is not in your best interest. With that said, if I am off by a half a percent or more, on any one given account on any given day, whether it's to the upside or the downside, 
So, as I went through and I did my research today, where is it? I have an even 48 days when I was to the upside higher than a half a percent against the S&P 500. And I had 27 days when I was lower than a half a percent against the S&P 500. Now, someone's going to tell me, and again, it's a rule that you need to understand. If you don't realize that the down days are twice as bad, fast, and painful than the up days, you shouldn't be in the market. And that's being generous. Usually the down days are four to five times worse than your best up day. But when I look at 47 versus 28, let me do some simple math. I'm gonna take a 27 divided by 48. 56.25, 56% of the time, I'm going to have a down day that will go through my deviation of a half a percent where I'm going to have a half a percent value on people's accounts that are worse than the S&P 500. I get it. That is why we use protection. We use the long put to act as an insurance policy against stock ownership. Because 56% of the time, those down days will be worse than my up days with a standard deviation of a half a percent. Why is this important or why does this matter? You have to set your goals expectations, um, time frames, and then you have to stick to them. You guys want to know what really pisses me off? I'm going to wait for one of you to ask if you want to know what really pisses me off. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you till someone says I want to know. And actually I need to hold on one second. I think someone just got the water turned off. I need to go thank whoever that was. Hopefully it's my wife. That way I can kiss and love her a whole lot versus one of my boys, right? All right, nothing's fixed. <laughs> Nothing is fixed. Uh, we just shut the water off in the house. What fun. All right, so if no one wants to know what really pisses me off, I guess I will uh, I will just skip that, that part. But uh, here we go. <laughs> Give it to Mary. Mary goes, so what really pisses you off? So it's interesting because I obviously am a money manager. So what is the first question people ask me 
all the time. If I'm going to pick up new business, someone type in, what is the first question that they're going to ask me? What do you think that first question is? <laughs> okay, that's fair. And you may have got me. Are you licensed, bonded, and insured? That should be the first question. But there we go. There goes Lee. How much money did you make? What was your returns last year? You know what really pisses me off? I go through and pick up new money. But their question was, how long did you do for a year? So my expectation is I'm going to have a year to do things, right? Oh, no. The first month, first week. Ah, we're down in this position. What I really want to say is no kidding. Ah, Boeing's dropped $80. As if I don't know that. Ah, we're losing $80 in Boeing. No, we're not. We've got a long put in place. Ah, we're not making up every penny on the way down. And I hear this garbage the first week, the first month that I take people's money on. I, it kind of inside of me frustrates me, right? I really want to say, so why the hell didn't you ask me when you were trying to figure out if I was going to be a good money manager? How'd you do the first week? If that was so goddamn important, why the hell couldn't you ask that as your first question? Oh, well, you know, I'm going to give you the year. We've got someone here that's giving someone a year that I don't think you should give them a year. Because I think their actions speak louder than their words. But there is someone here that's in our audience today out of the 15 of you that is giving a place a year by putting them into funds and putting them into ETFs and some restricted garbage that you can't even get out of. I'm pretty impressed with someone that will hold on to his integrity and said, well, uh, I gave him a year. Am I being two-faced and saying I'm pissed off that some people don't give me a year and they'll give uh, someone else a year. <laughs> yep, that also pisses me off. <laughs> but that probably comes to number four. And number four is simple. If you lack honesty, or integrity, the market is not the place for you. Dodd Frank has 10 year mandatory jail sentences now, but this goes a little bit deeper. This one goes to, can you be honest with yourself? Can you be honest with your wife? Can you be honest or have integrity with your client base? Do you have the cojones to say, you know what? I'm not managing Lockheed Martin really well right now. Great company, but you know, we put protection on to get through an election and we didn't need it and then fell through some some resistance or support levels and 
and it's uh, how would I say it's just uh, just the craps. <laughs> um, hold on, I'm being I'm being torn in a little different direction here. Someone's typing me out. You know, it's just going to be that kind of day. My son's car just got towed. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. You know, when it rains, it pours. This is just freaking ridiculous today. All right. It is what it is. Nothing I'm going to be able to do right now for him, but that was just... Where the heck are you parking, son? All right. Um, back to where I'm getting at. If you don't have the honesty to to be forthright with your returns, your gains, your losses, if all you do is you talk about your winners, but you forget about your losers, if you can't tell your spouse where you're at or hiding it, you might be a red, uh, not a redneck. Wait a second. You might not be good for the stock market. There's a level of integrity that you need to have with yourself. Am I putting more money into a losing position? Can I be honest with where I'm at and what I've done? It's shocking. Some people go, well, you're still talking about 2008, Kevin. And it was amazing how I was profitable in 2008 absolutely amazing loved it and then by 2009 we all were telling how profitable we were and and what have you by 2010 all of a sudden a thousand more people were more profitable in 2008 so where were you in 2009 showing that and telling people and everything uh, it doesn't matter now because we're now in 2010 Huh. It's difficult because for me, I've got to go and talk to the Lee Maxwells and the Phil Sorensons and the Stuart Castles and uh, Bill Henley. Who's my fifth? Uh, Mike Saltz. Lost, uh, lost number six there, passed away. I've got five people. I got Jeffrey Den that could tell you I was profitable in 2008. You have to have a level of integrity and honesty in the market, or it's not a place for you. This is the big one. People don't understand that. If you don't do the work yourself, who the hell are you? holding accountable this is an interesting one because out of the traders that are out there i recommend safe option strategies jeffrey dunyan and the gorilla trades guy i wouldn't do their trades i just wouldn't Neither one is doing 100% of them live. Neither one of them shows an open portfolio. Neither one of them um, is smart. They're placing a trade every week. It's, uh, it's very interesting. And someone just typed in very, very correct. A winning strategy doesn't mean winning every event. What? <laughs> Let me read that again. That's very pro profound right there. Kevin, a winning strategy doesn't mean winning every event. Agreed. Agreed 100%. Which is amazing that Jim understands that and that he sees that. And I'll be honest, uh, Jim, I think, holds one of the highest integrity for 
for an investor that I've ever seen. Amazing. But I think the level of integrity that Jim holds should be reciprocated to him. And I also think that when we come down to if you don't do the work, you don't do your research, you don't find out what you're putting people in, you don't understand what you're putting into, you don't tell them the whole story. If you can't tell them the whole story because you heard the story from someone else, because you were told by a sales manager what you're supposed to put people into, big reason why I hate, you know, big boxes, right? Kevin, just, you know, just for this week, if you can put three million of your current allocation or you find new money and put it into it. If you put 3 million, we're gonna give you a $21,000 bonus. I was like, awesome. And then you know what? Out of 25 registered investment advisor representatives, I was the only one that popped up the prospectus and the return on this. And I was like, oh my God, this thing hasn't made money in 13 years. So thinking I was being smart and, you know, a go-getter, go up to my sales manager, I'm like, uh, is this thing going to pop? Is there some portion of this fund that's going to really move? Is there a sector that I don't know about that's got this, this huge upside? Here, I thought I was showing ambition. I'm like, oh, you know what? He's going to like me. I researched. I'm going to know what I'm selling people. I know that, you know, 19% is technology and 17% is, is, uh, is financials. And, ho, oh, there is a 16% slanted way to the high side for energy so maybe energy is going to move is it you know solar is it is it uh gas and oils could it be electricity you know this guy just told me hey screw you hurley go sit down and go sell i was like what then the next word started with an f letter I got a couple F words at me. Go sit down and sell. Apparently for this firm, understanding what you were selling to people, taking some initiative and looking into it, trying to say, hey, it's going to go up because of this, because it's overweighted to energies. Oh, we think this or that. No, 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 no. Don't do any of that. Don't do the research on yourself. Don't hold yourself accountable. Just sell it to them. That's the day I learned I need to get out of there and go back to doing what I was doing on my own. That was the day that I realized the big boxes don't care about making you money. They care about making themselves money. The reps that are out there for you have been told by a sales manager what to sell you. They don't even know what the hell it is that they're recommending for you. I'm disappointed in traders. I hear traders and see traders all the time. Ah, I lost my butt on this trade. Why did you put it on? Why were you bullish when it was already oversold? What was your reasoning? Not that you have to be right. You can make mistakes. And as uh, Jim said, a winning strategy doesn't mean you win every event. Jim, I wish I had all my clients that thought just like you. But I would expect Jim to say, well, Kevin, you know, you put me in that. What a loser. Why are you doing it? Uh, well, you know what, Jim? It has this, Pete has this. I should be able to come to him with the answers because I made the decision because I looked into it and I should also find out what's what's not happening what I'm doing wrong
it surprised me how many times I hear, well, I heard it on Fast Money, I heard it from Kramer, I heard it on Fox, you know, I got it from Guerrilla Trades, I got it from Safe Options Trades, I got it from Options Animal, option, you know, Features Animal. Invest Tools had it, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you got the trade, but where's the research behind it? Where's the effort or the work placed behind it to understand where it could go? Did you even open up a chart? Did you check fundamentals? Why are you placing a 20% return when there's a resistance level at 7% higher than it's trading? What's the expectation is going to break that? If you don't do the work, you're not going to be held accountable and you don't understand what you're doing. I love this one. Luck isn't a skill. I bet you guys don't know this, but even a blind squirrel finds an acorn in the woods. Even an idiot in the stock market with all the tens of thousands of stocks that are out there will find a winning trade. Luck isn't a skill. It's a one-time unique opportunity to get lucky. It seems like there's some people that are lucky all the time. I'm going to reiterate one more time. Luck is not a skill. Luck is not a repeatable, methodical system to trade. Luck is not an investor's friend. Luck is for the golf course. Uh, someone just typed in, I'm going to 100% degree. Luck is where opportunity and preparedness meet. That skill. Skill is where the opportunity and your preparedness come together. There's no time frame. There can be an expectation. Luck is where opportunity and a lack of preparedness meet in my industry. I hear the word luck most often used on the golf course and hunting, maybe fishing, right? I still think it's amount of skill. If you're not glassing for your deer, your elk, if you're not reading trail where they're going to, if you don't know where the, the bedding areas are and their, their water source, you're going to stumble upon a deer through luck. If you don't know where the fishing holes are at, where you're going to see uh, a cliff that goes deeper where fish like to hang out, water temperature, you're just riding around a lake hoping. There's no place for hope and trading. you got to do your research. You've got to have your skills in place. As uh, the quote was just said, skill is where the opportunity and your preparedness meet. It's not luck. Never will be, at least in the stock market. I'm going to go with seven and I'm going to end it here. Success isn't to be bragged about but shared with others if it's all about you if it's all about your success 
if it's all about I did this, I did that, I, 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 you don't understand the stock market. The stock market is the single biggest source of retirement. If it's all about you, you'd miss the boat. If it's all about, I did this, I did that. Someone asks you to show them how you did it. Someone asks you to share the strategy, share the secrets. Don't sell it, share it. You've missed the fulfillment of success. Success is not to be bragged. Request accolades. Boy, that sure spelled wrong, isn't it? Needed to be puffed up. But it needs to be shared. The more people you can bring to success, the better you're making your community your nation. The more people you can bring to successful retirements or some financial freedom, that's more people that aren't putting their time and effort into that, but maybe putting their time or effort into to helping others, the giving of some service, to having to feed someone for not just a meal, but for a couple months during a COVID crisis where they lose their, their their job. The people that are truly successful, in my mind, are the ones that show exactly how they did it so others could try to replicate it. And they have a, a sense of service or duty to help their fellow man. I probably have a couple more, but these are the psychological rules or tendencies for trading or investing that you have to have if you're going to truly be successful. You don't judge yourself on a daily basis. You give yourself the time to be successful. You got to realize where your weaknesses are, those down days. You've got to work the numbers to find out where you're losing money or where you're not successful. You have to set your goals, your expectations, your time frames, and you got to stick with them. You need to have honesty or integrity. If you don't, this is just a 10-year mandatory jail sentence for those that are out in the industry. You've got to do the work. This isn't an industry where you ride on someone's coattails. You will fall off. And the cliff you might fall off on could be devastating to your portfolio and to your retirement. You need to hold yourself accountable. Do that work so you can hold yourself accountable. Don't trade on hopium and luck. Hope and luck are not skills that are valuable in the stock market. They never will be. And if you find that success, 
It's not something you keep to yourself. It's not something you go sell. You share it for the benefit of everyone. You try to make your community, your state, your nation a better place. Guys, I appreciate having you this year. I appreciate you guys sticking with me and and obviously we've had some pretty good successes. Have a great Christmas. We're going to sign off on Monday for two weeks or two and a half weeks. I wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. We sent out some gifts or we're sending out some gifts. Keyword, one of the gifts is a fraud. I think you'll uh, you'll be able to figure out which one it is. With that said, guys, have a, a happy holiday season. With that said, I'm going to sign off. I look forward to seeing you next year for our trade findings and adjustments. You will probably see something pop up in your email the beginning of, of January. In all honesty, your successes this year through the trades we put out there should have netted you somewhere between a 78 to 100% return if you had a small account just doing these type of trades. With that said, that's kind of an oxymoron because sometimes you needed margin that would last a lot longer. But I would call it a pretty successful year. With that said, guys, have a great holidays. I will see you Monday for the Hurley Investments commentary. And then we're going to sign off for two, two and a half weeks and start up again next year. Take care. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye.